Welcome everyone, this is Pilot Needles, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro, and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us, Terry Adwin! Hi hi! Sans Winda! Hello! Guarendus! Good evening everyone! Kilobathian! Good evening! And Arendus! Hey everybody! Oh, Kel- Kelabathian sounds like he- she's trying for a Drax position. Yeah. Well, well you know, he's of. not here. <laughs> well, you do have that. She's his representative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the legal representative, okay? <laughs> Dracula's legal representative. Re- re- legal representative. <laughs> let's head into let's head into game news, and we are going to begin with update 26.2 with the patch notes there. And we'll begin with some adjustments to the classes. First off, for burglars. Burglars are currently too survivable and powerful with their boss debuffs. So the following So the following changes have been are being made. Yes, but do you have boss debuffs? Yes. I play a red line burger, burglar, you have reveal weakness in all lines. Just as different things. Oh, oh, okay, that's what they meant by boss debuffs. I guess I thought that they meant debuffs that came, came from high-end armor or something like that from raids. Okay. No, they're talking about your basic class skills, because that's the burglar's shtick, is to do the debuffing. Okay. That's why I this is nonsense. Because, I guess because I tended to use that on many mobs instead of just the bosses that I never thought of them as boss debuffs, but okay. We begin with Reveal Weakness has had its base reduced from 4% to 3%. Boo. Bonus. Boo. Bonuses. <laughs> bonuses. We can't from, even stack it anymore. <laughs> and now bonuses, we it. Yeah. Bonuses from traits and legendary item legacies have been reduced by one half. Ratings debuffs remain unchanged. This vulnerability effect was simply too powerful in raids. They didn't make the bosses harder? Uh, well, they okay. made the boss... My warg might be happy, but I don't think it'll make much of a difference on the Mars. <laughs> I, I'm just so disappointed when I read this. I'm like, Provoke. you can't stack reveal weakness anyway, so... Yeah. I know, we used to be able to, but not anymore. Yeah, they nerfed it already. And this is the second uh, now. I don't even want to play my burglar now. Provoke has had its cooldown increased from six to eight seconds, making it harder for burglars to maintain a full stack of roll with it. That's for blue line, which I don't care about. Okay. <laughs> and then knives out damage reduction has been reduced from eighty five percent to seventy percent as this rendered burglars nearly invulnerable with skill bonuses. Because they were already squishy. <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't render you all that invulnerable. Trust me, as somebody who got stomped on a bunch. Unless maybe you're on the moors where creeps just don't do enough damage. Yeah, but that could be fixed by giving creeps damage. <laughs> yeah. that, could be, that could be fixed by making cre- uh, creeps, you know... Relevant on the moors. <laughs> For captains, revealing mark will no longer generate aggro. Whether that's good or bad depends on how you've been using revealing mark, I guess. Yeah, I suppose if you're using it to pull mobs, that's going to be a pain. But otherwise, that should be fine. For champions, champion survivability has been a bit on the low end, so they have received a few buffs and utility improvements. Really hadn't noticed the champion survivability was on the low end, so... But yay, I guess. (laughs) Like, my champion survives just fine. Glory now reduces all damage, not just melee damage. That's a more specific thing. Champion's Challenge now puts a short but powerful damage debuff on the target, minus 30% for 5 seconds, to help a skilled champion mitigate large called attacks. 
Now, is that the one that actually turned out to be bugged? For just a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, they shut it down after, like, what, two, three, maybe four at the most. Yeah, but did they shut down the skill, or did they... Because it's, I remember how they managed to fix the bug completely without bringing down the server, so I'm wondering, what did they do? Did they do something with the skill, or turn... Because it's... Well, I don't know, I actually, haven't actually this... played since this update. Okay. Now, I just know that it said that they had, they had put a stop. What was okay, they put the stop. Now I should note that the tooltip is having in, is still having an inaccurate reading because that obviously is going to require a client side change. So perhaps they were able to do a server side change that took care of the actual bug, but the tooltip has to be taken care of in the next update. That's a possibility. I suppose they champion as that a little bit, but yeah, it was a little bit of an issue that apparently some people were using to uh, make their characters overpowered and yeah, that doesn't work out very well. I think it had to do with the rune for the champion's challenge, so maybe they only had to do something for the one rune? Ah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, they might have done something for that one rune. You got a point there. The blue line vitality trait is now called Stalwart Blade and grants a maximum of 5% parry chance bonus in addition to its vitality benefit. And sprint cooldown has been reduced from 5 seconds to 2 seconds and down. Uh, actually, I think they meant minutes there because the yeah. next clause. The next clause says and down to 60 seconds with buffs, so obviously. They meant minutes there instead of seconds. Still way too long. And as for minstrels, Timeless Echo's Remember Hat said bonus healing is now properly tied to the skill toggle. And for Runekeeper, Ceases Arguments cooldown has been reduced from 3 seconds down to 2 seconds. Oh. <laughs> And the change in epic conclusion closing remarks dispel effect has been reverted. So apparently I heard a lot of yelling from runekeepers. What I don't understand is why Cecil's argument manages to do so much damage to creeps. No lie. I was briefly on the wars <laughs> earlier today and they were talking about a rune keeper out there that was doing about 350k damage each time they hit you. Spray, if he's any, any rune keepers I ever have are lucky to do 350, period. With Cecil's argument, which actually, is like a baby skill. Fair. Finally, if you've got to get good weapons before you get good damage. Um, <laughs> well, there is that. <laughs> but runekeepers can put out quite a bit of damage, and on the moors, it seems even worse. I don't know if it's because our mitigations just aren't mitigating it or what, but runekeeper damage on the moors is no joke. It is. I mean, I have like 609,000 hit points on my warg, and 350 takes like over half of that away, and that's just one hit. It's like, I, what? Yeah, it's pretty Take awful. way more damage to even dent them. So, because, and with the healing involved, I don't know if this, if this was an RK or not, but there was someone out on the moors who was actually, I mean, they, they counted it up, and I actually put this in our um, Discord. The creep side did over like two and a half million damage to this one freak. Not not an NPC or a boss. A free person playing a character got like over two million damage with their healing. They kept on healing and healing before they could actually even try to take them down. And it's like, yep. really? Yep, that's why it takes so many of us to kill one freak. Yeah. And even then you're not guaranteed. I don't know. They can still wipe out many of us. Guardians are wiping out creeps. 
yeah. in numbers. I mean, I get that PvMP is was never supposed to be like a one versus one. That that's fine, but it shouldn't be like one versus ten is still okay. <laughs> yeah, one versus ten, and those ten. Oh, hey, it's a fifty-fifty shot if you might actually do a little bit of damage to them. I mean, at least half of the ten will die before you have a chance of killing the one. So half of the, the ten are going to die. Creeps. Half of the ten are going to die before you even get close enough to to get like a a swipe or a bite on this freep. It's a runekeeper arranged, yeah. Man. Also, I still want stun immunity for my work. <laughs> yes. yes. You know when you when you stun the NPCs as a free person. They have this immunity where you can't stun them again for however many seconds. Why can't they give that to our cre- our freeps? Creeps? Right. Besides which, if our creeps stun a freep, they get the stun immunity. Why don't yeah. we? I mean, we can literally be stunned like seven, ten times in a row. Yep, we die, but- we come back, they stun us again like two, three, four times. They kill us, we come back, and they just keep stunning us and killing us. And it's like, okay. how come in PvE it never happens? I feel I, like in that's PvE, what I was just PvE. saying. <laughs> yeah, it's just PvMP. Like, even like on the moors, if you hit an NPC, they get the stun immunity. It's the player monster characters that don't have it. Right, because I always feel like that the, yeah, we're talking about NPCs that the mobs have a much better stun immunity than the players do. So I'm surprised that in, that when you go to creep side, that the creeps have even worse than the players. Creeps have no stun we, immunity. No. Even even with, like, your, po- your, your pots, your potions that give you... A little bit of immunity uh, to the being potions stunned. that are supposed to break you out of stun, but kind of really don't. Yeah, right. They give you and like they only five last seconds, like wait. five seconds or something. And I'm like, and then you don't get but a you chance. You have to, to use a one. potion for it. They've got a really long cooldown, mm-hmm. and the rune keepers, their stone will keep stunning you. They'll keep stunning you. Anybody else in the area will keep stunning you. The chances of actually moving are very slim, or being able to do any damage. And that's as a warg, so you can actually vanish and creep up on them and not be seen. If you're a visible type, which is literally everything else that is a creep, um, yeah. It's... Really? (laughs) You have no chance. We'll put that aside. (laughs) Even spiders, they will, like, dig down and they'll hide out, but the freak will just wait for you to pop up and finish you off. Yeah, they like doing that. I learned that back in the days when I was playing a spider. Yeah. We'll head into deeds now. The deed, the line of the kings, plaque for the king, um, Aldemir, has been returned to his proper place, but somebody must have stolen it, and the guard finally found it. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. For housing, corrected an issue that was preventing homeowners from painting the floors of their Hobbit homes. Those Yay. HOAs. Those Hobbit HOAs, man. They're tough. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I kept checking mine to see, like, okay, I didn't lose the floor that was there. I just can't see it. <laughs> uh and for the protectors of Wilderland, Quartermaster in Limlock now offers music housing decorations with Mists of Wilderland landscapes and combat themes. As for quests and adventure areas, filtered quests will not be accepted when the always accept automatic quest option is enabled. Which is good because it shouldn't have been. Right. Fix an issue that could cause extreme aggro ranges for players of lower level in Askad Mazal, the Chamber of Shadows. I'm not exactly... What kind of lower levels? Well, because it's supposed to go from level 50 up, it's supposed to be one of those deals where you can play it with different levels, but uh, if you have a mixed group, yeah, evidently the ones at level 50 or a, a little bit above were, were really getting cheap. 
And the Protectors of Wilderland Quartermaster in Limlock now offers music housing decorations with Mrs. Wilderland landscape and music. Oh, do I? Didn't they? Yeah, they a, put it why in did place. they list that one to us? They really wanted that quartermaster really wanted to advertise it, so he paid for two <laughs> slots. <laughs> Let's then head into the next little item, and that is that the free quest pack code is now active. That's right. All you have to enter in is the coupon code Lotro Free Quest. One per account, because I'm sure that people really abuse it if you're allowed more than one per account, considering that it won't do anything after the <laughs> Maybe that's just so that you know that you can use it once, and it'll be good on your European and North American servers. Well, maybe. Either that, or they just have to put in a limit number somewhere, and... Might as well have it so you've already used it if you've already used it. So that you won't be typing it 50 times with the same coupon code, despite the fact that after the first time, it's not going to unlock anything new. Fair. Yeah. But in any case... I got mine. VIPs can use it, so I got mine. Yeah, Yeah, because for those of us who are VIP who aren't lifetime members like Pineleaf, um... Should the VIP lapse, it's good to have that. Now, I did enter the code for the other game, just in case I ever lapse the VIP on that game. But yes, this gives you the region packs and the quest various quest packs that you have in there. Which are and going free all- for VIPs, which if you're a lifer, you have all of anyway. Right. So, yes, these are all the ones that are unlocked by VIP currently. It does not include the expansion quest packs, which are another matter, but we'll mention those a little bit later on what they're doing Some of that. Yeah, some of them. Yes. So let's head into the Lotro Beacon, issue 163, where I presume there's another screenshot of the new area. Looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it to me. So let's head into our community spotlights. Guest author Seth Adams writes about writing and gaming in Lotro. Okay, we talked about that last week. From our- <laughs> yeah, we talked about that last week because, of course, that appeared in our on Lotro players. Citadel Guard Adventures is uploading the full journey to level cap, and you can click on for the first episode. Five Row Jedi is has created a freelance Slayer Deed map and guide. Squirrel has created a new Virtue guide. Which we'll talk about later. Actually, that's also we we'll also talk about later. Wait, we're, we're getting shout-outs this week. Uh, Lindemar presents um, Artemire on June 11th on Laurelin. And Shirefest happens next week. And you could click to read about the three-day concert on Crick Hollow. <gasps> And for our weekly comment, what is your favorite quest in the game? Hmm. That's a really tough question. Because I like a lot of quests in the game. And I don't know that I could really pinpoint one as my absolute favorite favorite. So, mine used to be the squirrel in the library and the, um, <laughs> the, the, the great smile t- the, smiles? The great, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Took land. the, the um, ghost of old then, right but then there was this one field that you got to walk in and find a moomox and that was really <laughs> awesome <laughs> I knew yours would involve a moomox I ha- yeah I had a feeling Sans was going to have to her st- to deal with a moomox Certainly was going to involve spiders. No, those are the, on the other end of the spectrum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be next week's question, right? And like yeah. Terry, I can't pick any one 
favorite one. I could think of one or two that I really would prefer never to do again. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> Obviously, my favorite is, you know, Leland's lunch. But no, I'm kidding. No, that's the no. no. And if y'all didn't then know, I was going to say something about Leland with this, okay? I'm saltier yeah. than the Dead Sea about this stuff. You'll have to check back quite a few, quite a few episodes for that. But Kellabathian told us all about what she thought about Leland and his, his lunch that he had to fetch as a I wrote an entire song for my minstrel about <laughs> Leland's lunch after she ran it. It is not flattering. <laughs> Cathartic, <though. laughs> well, that's the entire point of it, is to get inspiration for a song. It doesn't say it had to be a glorious <laughs> um, heroic quest, right? I, just, I have never wanted to slap a hobbit so much. Well, except for <laughs> Lobelia. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> oh, we're both right that you're going to say Lolly. It's oh, the she, words that begin with it. L. Hobbits and yeah. begin with L. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Leland, Lobelia, and Lalia. It's like everything that begins with an L, if it's a hobbit, you just want to you just slap it. It's like, what's your name? Hi, I'm uh, Lola Wiggins. It's whoops. I mean, you just hit him. It's like, you know something <laughs> stupid is going to happen. It just hit him right now. <laughs> Well, let's see. I didn't think that Lily was that bad. Of course, you had the usual silly type quests you get in in in, in those Breland quests down Saddle, <laughs> Saddle. That's the place, Saddle. Yes, but that's another matter. All right, yeah. So we have to be careful of of names that begin with L. Hobbit names that begin with L. Well, we need to keep track of that. Yeah, Lotho, because no one likes Lotho either, so that's another This is what I'm talking about. It's just the L names. <laughs> it's the L names. <laughs> and then there's Lobelia. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to keep track of that at some point in there. Now, as for me, I was trying to come up with a good pick. Now, the first one that came to my mind was... What? That's from Western Gondor. I thought you were about to say something about Chia Pets myself. <laughs> I was like, okay, maybe I... Anyway. Uh, never mind. That, that, anyone else have anything they wish to go before we move on? Then head on to the fan site news where last week we found a baby Niles ghoul. And on Lotro Stream is your first stop to find Lotro on Twitch. Uh, Destin Gaming is our newest streamer. Winnie does D's and Eldalath heads to Minas Morgul. Also on Twitch, Weekly Reaper streams a memorial service for a friend who passed away suddenly. Bloodborne fights for glory, and Coffee Holic Gamer quests in Mirkwood. And over on YouTube, Anding runs a permanent, permanent stout axe. I can't believe that's an ongoing series. Like it lasted more than one episode. <laughs> Especially with Anding's style. Exactly. That was my point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A permanent stout axe. Well, yeah, we'll see. Although, we'll as, long as far as I know, it's it's at least his second attempt at it, because I know he's already killed one of them. <laughs> well, that should be no surprise. <laughs> it wasn't a surprise at all. Viro's Print Sense, the latest bread and jam concert, and Rulunia, oh, Raluniel has fun with friends. So let's look at the screenshot of the week where apparently somebody is trying to steal something as a dwarf carries a big chest in this humorous screenshot of the week sent by Daz. Send in your screenshot through contact at sangstonegames.com And I'm trying to say, where is this that he can take a chest like that? 
I mean, I kind of want to say it's in a Numina somewhere with the rubble pile and the fact that there's a shade, but it must be one of the instances or something. So is it possible? What about that place um, near the Great River? Oh, like a um, Parth Celebrant. Do, do oh, you have you to carry right. those? Oh, that's right. You do have to carry those. I think you do, Kellerbrand. actually. That's it. Yeah, because you're trying to throw them into the river. Yeah, good call. All right. Good. We have someone who recognized the area, or at least the quest in question. And a note that Travis uh, Marrow says that they like the ending quest where Lairdin dies and Amartya loses her hand. Spoiler. But because it's heartbreaking. <laughs> That's not really an ending quest. It's the ending of volume one of four yeah. <laughs> plus extras. Yeah. So we have that. The But you notice that. Does he like it because someone with the name of L lost her hand? Or died, I mean? Well, it's that's an, an elf. elf. That's an elf. Yeah. True, I know. That's not if it had been a hobbit. <laughs> yes. But then, you could go and think with Amartheal, though, concerning losing her hand. I mean, in a way... I'm sure that somebody, that's someone that a lot of people wish to have harm done upon them for some time. Yeah. Yeah, that I've had it coming though, to her. Yeah, I kind of have to admit, though, after she she did lose it, I was, every time she appeared in a scene, I was always peeking to see if her hand was still gone. <laughs> or if it had, you know, she had like a Luke Skywalker, like, you know, fake one on Elf. or something. Elves aren't starfish. They can't grow their hands. No, but she would have, like, you know, I was wondering if, if they gave her a fake one, just, you know, like a, like, you know, like a silver one. Now we're getting into Shades of Game of Thrones. But, um, you know, just, you know, something, you know? Somehow Narmalith is the Jamie Lannister of, of, of Angmar. It's just not worth <laughs> She can't, she can't be. She can't be because she doesn't have a sibling. Moving on. I'm not going to go moving on. <laughs> yes, let, let's move in on that and head into our store sales. And what's on sale this week? Well, speaking of expansions, we've got a select expansion quests that are now available to buy in the Lotro store for 99 points each through August 31st of 2020. So that's almost two full months that people, almost three full months that people have to redeem this coupon and get almost all of the expansion quests. Actually, I think it is... Um, yeah, no, it's... Okay, so it's all of our expansions, except for Mordor and Miss Morgul. So, right. Moria, Mirkwood, Rohan, um, Helmseep, Isengard, those are all 99 points each, which is amazing. So if you don't already yes. have them, now is the time to get them. You have three months to bank up points! And you don't even need all that many points. <coughs> and there's a link you can follow to read more on what all's involved with that. Goes along with the um, free quests for everybody. Yes. Which Just is fantastic. Note that if you already have it, it's not worth getting it again. Now, yeah, well, if, if you, you already, already have it, it doesn't allow you to buy them again. But yeah. Well, there's some confusion on that exact matter. If you have the expansion, it won't allow you to buy them. But apparently, it it does it doesn't filter out perfectly. Even even Cordovan is confused on this one. So, so just remember, if you already own the the quest pack, you you don't need to buy it again. Obviously, right. Um. So in addition to that, we have our weekly coupon, which is the Crimson Dye coupon code Crimson Dye now through June 11th, and it's a storage sale this week. We have 20% off vault and shared storage, inventory slots, and currency cap now through June 11th. Waiting on the wardrobe sale. Need a wardrobe sale. 
Needing a wardrobe. I I'm need sure more wardrobe. Your wardrobe was on sale. It doesn't say it, but I'm pretty sure I bought it on sale on Friday. I will have to look. Should double check that. But well, I can't check it right this second because I'm running the next one, and everybody will hear it. Fair. Uh, Travis Muris actually no says, please note um, it only gives the quests and not the instances or any special features. That is correct. Well, no special features. So any, like, pre-order items or anything. But you're not going to get pre-order items anyway. Um, But, like, the the big Moria pack gives you the extra classes, the Warden and Ringkeeper. Um, Those you would have to to purchase separately. Wait for them to go on sale. Yeah. Um, And a lot of the instances and stuff are included in the Lotro Free Quest thingy. Yes. Now... It does say, though, that the instant clusters for Isengard and Rohan are included. Uh, whether that's a separate purchase or a, or within the associated ones. I don't know. I know Helm's Deep yeah. includes the epic battles. Yeah, Helm's Deep includes epic battles. Not that anybody cares because everybody hates epic battles, but you know. <laughs> I shouldn't say everybody. I'm sure there are some people that really enjoy running epic battles. I cannot imagine why, unless you really, really, really need to just go take a nap. <laughs> like there you need to, be, you, you need to feel like your com- character is accomplishing yeah. something while you nap. So you log in and you do an epic battle, and then you just go nap. For they you want can to get a good half an three. hour snooze. What? They want to finish volume three. Yeah, well, you can get a good half an hour snooze. <laughs> 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 I have confirmed that you can actually do them without being at the keyboard. And, and uh, in one case, I actually got a platinum completion with not, and I was AFK the whole time. <laughs> I've also been killable <laughs> AFK though, so it's not a hundred percent. It is not a hundred percent sure, but it's a fifty-fifty shot. Bank up those promotion points. Yeah. And Travis uh, does want to mention uh, that wardrobe is on no, sale. No, no, she hasn't gotten to that part yet. <laughs> get to it. What? Or, or did you get to that already? Yeah, I did. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Jared wardrobe is on sale. Yes. Oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah, it's confirming. right. It's not on the. It's not on the official list. So apparently. No, but I logged in to the twenty percent off right now. Okay, so awesome. they forgot that off the list. So All yeah, right. get the wardrobe too. Sam says epic yeah. battles are okay, but he doesn't want to solo them. The problem with duoing is that then you actually have to pay attention because they up the difficulty just enough as if it's the duo that you have to actually be present for them. Um, like, uh, not Deeping Wall, the one after Deeping Wall. What's the one after Deeping Wall? Deeping Coom? I don't know. Whatever one comes after yeah. Deeping Wall, you can literally just stand at the spawn point and let the soldiers handle everything. Just saying. It's a good half hour nap. <laughs> Let's then head into our site news and we'll begin with Squirrel's Virtue Guide. Where it goes over the Update 24 revamp, the Virtue FAQ, and various tips relating to virtues, active, passive, and trait trees, offensive and defensive virtues, preferred virtues, leveling virtues, overview of weekly Virtue XP, and then at the end, asking the question, are they worth it? Yeah, this was actually a really good guide. So everything you need to know about virtues. I mean, you may not necessarily agree on preferred virtues or whether or not they're worth yeah. it, but yeah, um, it's it's a good overall, and it's <laughs> better than trying to mouse tip tooltip over every single one and figure out what's what. 
Yes. <laughs> which I have I done, and it's really annoying. I'm trying to remember it now. Which, now, which one did the one I mouse dipped over three times before it say again? <laughs> what I really wish is I wish that it would save when you set it on your first trait tree so that you don't have to try and remember what you just picked when you go to your second trait tree. I'm doing a lot of screenshotting. Okay. Ah, yes, the thrills of it. You, you need good real-life virtues in order to be able to survive, to get, to survive <laughs> working virtues. <laughs> Let's then head into our new player question. And what's the question for this week? What criteria should you use when deciding to get rid of your Light of Arendelle gear? Is it a particular time like within the quest chains uh, a personal preference how do you de I finally got rid of mine when the gear I was getting was so much better that I decided it was worth it I would presume though that was after you left Mordor I was out of the original Mordor. Mordor. yeah and I was very reluctant to get rid of it. I held on to it, I think, into the dwarf holds because I wanted to be able to go raiding still if the opportunity presented itself. Oh, yeah. And you needed 200 light to do that. You still need 200 light if you're going to do that. Um, and I actually had just gotten rid of it when the Howling Pits came up. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't get rid of it, get rid of it. I stuck it all in my... Um, in my vault, which is why I keep needing more vault space, because I knew I would need the light if I wanted to do stuff. Um, but <laughs> putting it back on nerfed me so badly <sighs> that the Howling Pits was still, uh, the pits. So, um, <laughs> I, I couldn't decide if they were better with it or without it, um, because of the nerf to my, uh, gear being basically as bad as the light debuff. So, um. Yeah, that's how I decided. The stats were just way better on what I was getting. Yeah, so I wasn't around for the Radiance gear that they did the first time Moria came out, but apparently people who were saying that this was Radiance 2.0 were not mistaken, because it's, it's really an aggravating to have this mechanic in great, but you never really move past it, and they don't continue to use it, and... Uh, I don't right. have any more. I don't have any more light gear. I got rid of all my light gear. That's why I'm not doing it. That's why I'm not doing anything in the game anymore. Leveling up characters and creeping in the moors. That's all I'm doing. Anyone else have anything that we should add relating to that? Then listen to our week in Lotro. Terry Edwin, what were you up to? Well, I had a pretty light week. Um, one of the things I did is in the Calabathian Silence, and I will let her talk about it. Terry went out bears. Stupid bears. Oh! <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, uh, we got there, and Pine Leaf, like, starts cracking up, even before he's reading the, the what Grimbjorn's saying, because he knows I'm going to start pitching a fit. And we get there, <laughs> and Grimbjorn's like, oh, help with daily chores. I'm like, no! No! I don't want to help with the stupid daily chores! Don't you have enough bears around here to do it? And elves! There's still elves parked on the lawn! Make them do your chores! But we went and we rounded up chickens and mushrooms and cut firewood and blah blah blah. And then there was a sad thing that happened. So we are finally away from Grimbjorn's house again without having lunch again without actually staying there. Stupid bears. <laughs> and yeah, that was my week. How about you, Horrendous? <laughs> well, mine was also related to Bjornings, but not that group of Bjornings. <laughs> um, I took my level 21 Bjorning up to uh, do the retaking weather top and since. And th this one always, for some reason, I always struggle with this one because I'm very directionally challenged. And so finding Candace Camp in and of itself is a struggle for me sometimes. <laughs> 
Uh, this time I ended up halfway up the mountain before realizing how far up I was. I somehow completely skipped half of the route. It was hilarious looking back on it. Just how badly I navigated. But anyway, I was trying to catch up with the rejects group because they had done that last week. Um, and I didn't realize it before I started, but I started the fellowship version of the quest or the instance by myself. So I ran the fellowship instance of retaking Weathertop <laughs> with an underleveled Bjorning and only died once. I was kind of impressed. Well, you're uh, but OP for balls. <laughs> I, I'm beginning to see it, but you know what? I appreciated it, so I didn't have to do the same thing a million times. Uh, I think my favorite part was at the end where they have that uh, mountain troll that comes out and he's got like 10,000 health compared to my like 1,500 health at the time. Uh, it, it was almost like one of those things that you would have had to run at triple speed in order for someone <laughs> watching it to be interested because it took forever <laughs> to get this guy down. But he didn't kill you! No, he didn't. Not, uh, the first time, yeah, I didn't realize he was coming out and I was almost dead and got completely stomped on. Like, literally. But the second, yeah, seriously. Set well, on no, fire. that he does that. It's that. A, he comes out and stomps. That's the first thing he does. Yeah, but it was it was interesting, to say the least, when I got out of it um, to find out that it was the Fellowship instance and go, okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so anyway, that was my the majority of my week. Uh, Calabathian, how was your... Well, um, I have an ongoing saga right now. Um, I, I finally broke down, and uh, I did my finances, and I realized... I can get the Mordor Ultimate Fan Bundle. Because, you know, it's really expensive. Um, but I bought it. And when it finally came in and I opened it on my main. On Laurelet. And I didn't realize the bundle came with a 105 Valar. Uh, well, my main is level 115, 116. So I have a, a Valar, uh, area of the Valar to 105 that I literally cannot use because the other two characters on Laurelin are ones that I don't actually play. <laughs> so I've, I have put in a ticket to see if, if, you know, hey, can we just move the Aria to, you know, Landreval because I've actually got a, a character or two I could use this on there. And I haven't heard that. Um, I'm still waiting on some kind of reply on that. But, um, but yes, so that was the first thing that happened. And, and when I realized it, I clicked it and opened it and I was like, yay. And then I said, wait, a 105 Aria of the Valar? Crap. <laughs> what am I going to do with that? If I'd known, I would have opened it on Landy instead because all my other characters are going to get the same thing. And it's an account wide. So, yeah, but that one thing goes to the character that you first open it with. Yeah, so we're going to see about that. Um, well, uh, the there must be thing, another character on uh, um, on Laurelin. Well, I could, but good lord, I'm not going to play them either, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. I think I have three Aria characters now, and none of them I'm more <laughs> actually playing. Yeah, so anyway... Um, Kelevorn and uh, uh, Galabrilith, um, uh, Terry's uh, Runekeeper? Lore Master. Lore Master, sorry. Pat. Um, yeah. Um, they are currently Cuckoo for Luku uh, <laughs> in the Bone Veils. Yes, we're at the Luku thing where we're doing stuff there. We're actually on track now because I caught, uh, Kelevorn has caught up with her in the epic storyline so now we can actually run the epic and kind of try to catch up on it together as completely and totally over leveled characters in in uh you know in it wife and everything but it's fun because now she can weird. collect all the dudlin cosmetics which i keep <laughs> she keeps checking with me she's like do i want this one no you already have this appearance it's okay you can just pick whatever um, yes so it's a good thing that uh wardrobe is on sale because i'm going to <laughs> Um, but yeah, so they're doing that, and um, that's interesting. That, that's interesting. Um, but um, I created a stout axe runekeeper, both of which of those things I have never played before, named Karak. I wanted to go for Zap, Z Z A P P, 
that was already taken. He was going to be one of the rejects' um, cousins or brother or something. But because uh, that that person is Zot, so Zot and Zap in you know Rune Keepers. But Karak, um, when when he gets to fifteen, his his uh, her name will be Boom. <laughs> um, so I created him, and, and I'm having fun with that. Um, and then uh, after the girls ran um, this last Sunday, um, I kind of showed up, but they have uh, level forty something female birds. I don't have one. I was going to have to you know do whatever. But I showed up, so they let me run Kelivorn, who is, you know, level 107, 106, something like that, with them as kind of like a bodyguard, added protection type thing, just in case things got, you know, they got in over their heads, and they, they did. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> it's girls! Of course they did! <laughs> but uh, they convinced me at that point that I needed to create a hobbit bird to run with them, and that is how Heistia, uh, H-E-I-S-T-I-A, like Hestia, goddess of the hearth, only with, you know, heist in it for burglary. Um, so she's going to run with them, and um, we're power leveling her for the next run we do, not this Sunday, tomorrow, but the next one. Um, and she's like level 21, and so, you know, 20, 20, 20 more levels to go. I ought to be sedated. But, um, yeah, uh, we're, we're working on that. And she just did her, her skirmish stuff today, so she is ready to skirmish and power level through skirmishes if necessary, too. And finally, uh, it was a very kind of a busy week. Um, when I, I kind of was on Arkenstone with my warg alone. Yeah, I was soloing it, just kind of turning stuff in and running around, you know, as a daily thing. Um, I went to TA, and, you know, because Terry had taught us, you know, don't talk to, you know, people without, you know, since prey checking the area seeing what's on track just you never know and she's right because of course when i did that there was one single little dot and name right upstairs and so i kind of you know called it out there's like one person here in ta and um so some other creep you know another creep came by and we, we found out where they were it's and they were like i didn't know that existed it's a little hidey there yay that neither of us knew it was, it was artemis guys um but um we didn't know that it existed there and he goes huh i'm gonna have to remember that for next time so yeah um found a new hidey hole in talascarn in on the moors and it didn't just surprise me but you know the other creep that was hunting the freep that was using it so uh yeah i'll show you guys where it is next time we get on the moors because seriously i did i was like what <laughs> um but yeah Gore, why how about you? How was your week? <laughs> well, uh, as you kind of touched on, girls worked on their class quest, the level 50 class quest for Bergs in the Misty Mountains and Angmar. Oh my gosh. And that lead to... <laughs> yeah, we haven't we haven't done the, um, the epic for Angmar, so it became one of those things where um, the hunter ported us to Gathforth here and we had to ride back because we tiptoed a well, one of us particularly tiptoed a little too close to the line, seeing how close we could get and maybe Kelleborn kill things on the other side of the line. And yeah, that didn't work. So yeah, there was it was quite an adventure, which, you know, as Calabathian said, led to Operation Level That Berg. Um, <laughs> this week, uh, Mordor update for Guer. Um, she is on her last allegiance, as in, like, I have one more level and I will be done with all four allegiances. Um which is what had led me to asking the new player question about, okay, um, I'm going to have to probably, well, I don't have to, but I'm probably going to want to do deeding. So do I get rid of the gear right away? Do I try to get everything done first? Still trying to decide. Um, the, the biggest portion of my time, though, was spent um, on where I finished up the Three Kingdoms. Uh, blazed through the Iron Hills. Uh, uh, all of the quests are done. I have uh, Slayer Deeds still. Um, and one quest. I have some new titles. Um, I just got them today. I have uh, Howling Delver and Howling Warrior, but Howling Vanquisher, which is the f completing the advanced, still did not get that one done. Um, so yeah, a little bit of work to do there as far as as uh, Gwer getting done with uh, the Arid Mithrin. I want to get the Howling Pit. I'm actually running with Baldric and we are both trying to get 
the second secret stone done at the same time. So, yeah, we're trying to take two. I'm on level. He's a bit above level, but trying to take two two characters that are not fully to end game yet through that is very challenging. I it's amazes me amazes me that it's a three man. Um, but also amazes me that we made it to the third tier. But anyway, um, I did become a herald this week. In other words, I finished the the lay of rest, rhyme and rest, and I headed into the arid Mithrin today and saw some really amazing things, like great big giant skeletons. Oh my god, aren't those great? <laughs> went went and saw a really big glacier. Um, yeah, I was in the Withered Heath right before before I finished up questing earlier today to have dinner and come to the podcast so yeah i'm really excited to keep moving on and seeing more of the story um question Mm -hmm. question why those gigantic skeletons Uh uh-huh were there actual giants in the area that oh no no, no, there's dragon skeletons they're okay yeah no they're they're bigger than smog they're bigger than smog they're great big dragons they're huge they're they're big they're awesome i was about to say is this kind of like you know you have Undead giant arms and and, no, 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 no. and there's like no giants. Only in Angmar. Only in Angmar. Okay. So Sans, what did you do this week? Well, this. Uh oh. Forgot Uh-oh. to push. Started inserting Z's everywhere. Sorry. <laughs> uh, this week, two more questing for dwarves and bears, um, on both Sanswinda. And um, Amalora on Land of All, and had some fun running around killing things, and some less fun collecting things for mornings. And um, all in all, it was a pretty good time. Um, kind of nice to run through like Avabarg and not aggro everything. Um, <laughs> you know, that was fun. And um, then I. Helped some with the Operation Level at Berg, which was also fun. Um, and I reached friend standing with Minas Tirith on Arkenstone Sands Wounded during the field trip. So, I'm pretty proud of that, but not super excited to do dailies. How was your <laughs> week? Sands, Sands, Sam Burke in the chat said, same thing I do every week, avoiding spider. <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very well. We'll begin with my stout act who rescued a king that was being kept in the dungeons of Barador. I freed the stout act who have been enslaved all this time. They're free, they're free, they're free. And of course, I was promptly exiled after that, which tells you how much gratitude that king has, doesn't it? But most of all, I noted in here. That I went to Barador. I freed stout axes from Barador, and not a single one of those prisoners recognized me. Despite the fact that at the very beginning of the stout axe storyline, you're a prisoner in Barador. <laughs> right? Well, you know, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, alright. You may not be the same prisoners who were there. I know, that's all. Yeah, they may have killed all... You know, all turnover for prisoners in Barador has probably got to be really high. I suppose that's a possibility, but it seems like... But you would think that if dwarves make such a big deal about what clan you're in and all that stuff, then mm-hmm. you would think that they would be able to recognize someone who's from their clan. Or unless I've been sort of dressing like a long beard all this time out of habit because I've been living along with along with long beards. That could explain a great deal. Maybe. And maybe that's it. But anyway long- Ruka can still tell the difference between long beards, Zelruka and Stout Axes though. Hmm. The, the and you Ruka? know Having been, having actually created my stout axe very, uh, you know, very, very recently, the appearances that you are offered, lots of them have long beards. So, now I'm all confused. Okay, so what makes a long beard a long beard? <laughs> if you, you scarf and you talk to anyone, 
They know what they are, and they know what everybody else around them is. Mm-hmm. And they're very certain, like, which clans are which. Like, it doesn't seem plausible that the Stout Axes in Mordor don't know. Right. Well, unless they've been trapped in Mordor for so long that they literally have lost that knowledge. Well, I mean, they're well, surprised Gimli. Yes, because they... I'm standing next to Gimli, so if I looked any different from a Longbeard, they would immediately be able to tell that because because there'll be a difference from how we look from Gimli. I'm trying to remember what the dialogue was like with my dwarf. I think my dwarf isn't quite to that point. No, he just met the Saudaxes. Uh, but it was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I don't think I've noticed anything, a single word that looks like it would be different from what they would say to a regular dwarf. But yeah, did. I didn't say there was some dwarf specific dialogue, but I was a long beard. So they were just surprised to me and Gimli. Right. Now, I am going to try the Allegiance quest most likely, and, but I have a feeling no one's going to notice any difference there either, despite the fact on there. So I think I'm going to give up after that and not bother because the reason I created and ran this character and all that stuff in the first place was so I could see what types of differences there are in the dialogue in doing those quests when you're, when you're a stout ex. And as far as I can tell, there are no differences at all. You know, unless it was one of those insert race name here type cases, but... In which case, of course, they do say stout axe sometimes on there, despite the fact that, well, okay, they know I'm a stout axe here, but nowhere else do they know I'm a stout axe. <laughs> My honor warden visited some memorials in Wildermore and took care of things in there. And during the Friday night fight, we ran the Battle of the 21st Hall Stand at Amonsu and assault on the ring right there. And that's it for our week in Lotro. So now let's head into our news beyond Lotro, where we have a wallpaper gallery by Darren Loremaster. And this is a Riddles in the Dark gallery showing all six stanzas of the Riddles in the Dark. We currently have 13 supporters on Patreon, and if you'd like to join this illustrious rate of players and help support Lotro players, go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. Your money will be used for our podcast hosting, website hosting, and to pay for our live shows. If you wish to support us without joining Patreon, you could send a message to Dracula at email at drac at lotroplayers.com. We did not receive any emails this week, but if you like since when you can send it to podcast at luchaplayers.com. You could also follow us at Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Ally, the Lucha Players at Lucha Players, Arendis at Arendis, Piney Fit Piney Needles, Sandswinda at Sandswinda, Terry Adwin at Terry Adwin, Guerendis at Nedishell, and Calabathian at Calabathian. The Players Alliance has Three shows on Mondays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News, though I should warn you that we are planning to move that show soon. Mainly because we seem never to be able to get to do it on Mondays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. On Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Lodge Players News and XP Quest. That has a variable start time. Thus, you should follow XP Quest on Twitter to find out when the shows begin. But please note that this show is not you can join us for our shows at lochplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight, Dan. This is Pine Needles reminding you to socialize responsibly.